Hello, everyone. Welcome to another IFN interview. Today, we are joined by Joe Fournier's coach, Dino. Welcome, Dino. Can you introduce yourself to the audience? My name is Dino Spencer, and I'm the owner and operator and head coach at the world famous Fifth Gym, Miami Beach. Amazed to hear, man. So, can you uh, tell us more about uh, Fifth Street Gym? Fifth Street Gym is famous not because of me, because of Muhammad Ali. Angel Dundee was his trainer. And when he won the first world title against Sonny Liston, he trained here, trained here for many years, fights. Uh, and then it closed, and Angelo and I, as Angelo is a very old man, we reopened the gym 2010, along with Mohammed mm -hmm. and my partner, Tom Stiles, the four of us reopened the gym, and uh, we've been open ever since. And about Mohammed Ali, have you um, witnessed him training at the gym? Say that again? Have you witnessed of Muhammad Ali training at the gym? I'm too young for that. I missed it. Uh, too bad to hear, man. So uh, with your gym, can you explain uh, why your gym is uh, better than the others in your surroundings? Well, it's not that it's better than others. It's different than others. And what makes it different is, one, the weather. It's always hot in here. And it, it's really a good environment because when you're fighting under the TV lights, it's very hot. So it's something that needs to be dealt with and you get used to it. Um, plus, it's, you know, running is a big part of training. And you, fighters need to run. If you don't want to be a runner, you don't want to be a fighter. So yeah. the weather is very conducive to running. If you have the beach, it's beautiful. You know, what we try to do in general, both here at the gym and then the surroundings, is try to create an environment for people to enjoy their training as much as possible. To make it interesting, motivating, exciting. Even though it's very mundane, it's very it's jab, cross, hook, uppercut, four punches. Yeah. Well, you know, there's 10 ways to throw, but it's still four punches. So it's very mundane, it's very uh, boring. So we do everything we can to make it make it exciting, interesting, enjoyable with the with music, with the weather, with uh, training partners, with uh, spectators, with a lot of spectators. So when you're sparring, sometimes it feels like a real fight because usually there's a bunch of hot girls watching. So, uh, Men tend to step their game up. <laughs> Great to hear, man. So, with the environment, does it improve the fighter's uh, mentality before the fight? I think it maintains their mentality because consistency is the secret. I yeah. think it, it it makes consistency a little easier. Number one, and number two, like I said, when we have an audience, it gets the butterflies going, and you kind of get used to dealing with that. Yeah. And uh, the management, you know, stress management, emotional management is as important in boxing as speed, power, timing, distance. They're all of those are equally as important. You can have all of those and not manage your stress and not make it through your first professional fight. Yeah. And with the emotional management part, uh, do you think that Joe Fournier controls his emotions uh, good when he pushed JJ? At the press conference, I think uh, Joe did that intentionally. He knows exactly what he's doing, and he, in, in, when he fought the O2 Arena before, he was cool, calm, and collected. Um, he, he's probably one of his best talents. More than speed, more than power, more than agility, balance, all the things you need to box. He is his stress management. He is his emotional management. He can keep himself contained and focused, and keep his eye on the ball his uh, energy on the target. And uh, I think that's the secret to a lot of his success, both inside and outside the ring. Great to hear, man. So with this scam, would you say that Joe Fournier has been taking this scam more serious than others? I think he's a serious guy. I think he takes everything seriously. I think he parties seriously. I think he does business seriously. I think he trains seriously. I think he spars seriously. I mean, you know, I don't ask much of by fighters, other than come every single day, twice a day, come on time, and pay your bills. Yeah. Um, some days are good days, and some days are bad days. They say Ali lost every round of sparring. Yeah. But he didn't lose every fight, that's for sure. So yeah. it's not about performance as much as consistency. Yeah, exactly. And uh, with Joe Fournier being in this camp, would you say that he's been uh, training harder uh, for K side and his other opponents? I wouldn't say he trained harder, but he came in in a lot better shape. 
They yeah. made a big mistake. They almost had him fight in January. He was out of state, and they gave him a short notice. I don't know what they thought that they needed a long time to get ready. They just thought he's young and in shape. He's not going to become a new boxer in six months. So I don't know what they were thinking, but this gave Joe every opportunity in super good shape. So he's he's doing two of these. I mean, you can't not get in shape doing two of these. Yeah. And with uh, Joe Cunha being in this camp, do you guys have a game plan to beat KSI with? Yeah, beat him up. The guy's a video game player. But it, uh, is there any particular particular way you guys uh, are wanting to beat him? Just put pressure on him, punch him. I mean, it's not that it's not he's not fighting. Uh, you know, Alexis Darguello. You know, who Alexis Darguello is. Yeah. <laughs> I have to cut that out now. Why? Be because now I look like a casual. Yeah, but you're that's what this is a regular conversation. You're not a boxing expert. Okay, all right. I'm the boxing expert. Yeah, okay. So okay. okay, so you just said that he is not that one fighter you just called him. Alexis Arguello. One more time, please. Alexis Arguello. Okay, with Alexis, what's the difference between Alexis and KSI, would you say? Uh, Alexis punches harder. He's got better stance, better balance, better blocking, better defense, better head movement, better endurance, better timing, better experience. Uh, he was the, arguably the greatest fighter I ever lived at 130 pounds. He also fights in his weight class. As good as Alexis was, he fought in his weight class. If KSI was a professional fighter, he was fighting 100. He was my fighter. He was fighting 154 or 160 pounds. He never fight at 185 pounds. He might walk around at 185 pounds. When Joe pushed him, you saw him go flying. He's not a big guy. Yeah. Joe walked yeah. around. Joe walked around at 220. Yeah, and with um, uh, uh, the 165 uh, f five pounds with JJ, well, how would you how would you think that KSI can reach that low in weight? Well, with proper training and diet and a water cut, you can make 160 easy. Yeah, but the thing is, isn't he already very uh, thin at the moment at 170? Um, he's thin, but. He would if he had to fight professional. I guess he could maybe fight one sixty eight. How tall is he? He's like five ten. Yeah, I have a fighter here that that's five ten, that is three and zero as a pro. He fights at one hundred and forty pounds. He would beat the brakes off KSI. Wow, I mean, w why would you think that KSI would fight at that high of a weight then? Because that's what professionals do. Hmm. And Professionals do you... don't walk around at 185 and fight at 185. They walk around at 185 and they fight at 168. They fight yeah. at 160. That's just what professionals do. They water cut, then they water load the science. And yeah. for, for them to take a fight with a guy this big is just it's silly. But when you're the promoter and you want to sell tickets, you'll do whatever. You know, he's the promoter. He wants to sell tickets. He'll do whatever. Plus, you know, he's got the judges. They're his judges. It's his show. Yeah. So, you know, if he gets knocked down, they're going to count to 20 before they come up, not to 10. They're going to go, one, yeah. two, get back up, yeah. three, come on, you can do it. Yeah, and uh, with the game plan against uh, KSI, how would you see the fight against KSI go? You know, I mean, just... You know, pressure, a lot of boxing. Just keep punching him until he, until he decides that this is not for him. And when do you think that case, uh, Joe Fournier would stop KSI? Uh, you know, it's a, you know, like it depends on you know this. This is entertainment. I don't know how much entertainment they want. They want to entertain us for one round or two rounds or six rounds. I don't know. You know, this isn't this isn't uh, sanctioned by the British Boxing Commission, big British boxing board. Yeah. And uh, about KSI, did you guys uh, uh, hear anything about him before the fight with Joe Fournier? I've never heard the letters KSI before. Yeah. But I'm a 52-year-old man, so this is not my 
this is not my wheelhouse. I just, as they told me we were fighting, I saw the videos of him running up to that last guy and punching him. You know. Yeah. Um, I'm glad the YouTubers are doing this. I'm glad we're getting people eyeballs on boxing. Yeah. I'm glad that little kids are they're seeing the, the Jake Pauls of the world and, and putting on a pair of gloves. I'm glad for all that. It's just they're not, it's not my demographic. Yeah. And uh, with KSI's uh, past, are you guys looking at his old uh, fights to study his style? He doesn't have a style. He doesn't have, he doesn't, do we, I watched a couple of his fights, sure. I watched him throw haymakers, yeah. I watched him bounce up and down like a karate fighter and run yeah. at the guy. Yeah, I've seen his, but it's hardly considered a style. He's okay. a beginner. You gotta give the guy a break. Yeah, that's understandable. And if KSI um, would be a threat, what do you think his main weapon would be against Fournier? I, mean, I guess it's his right hand. That's what he hurt the last guy with. Yeah. That's it? Only the right hand? What? Is it only the right hand? Well, he doesn't have a good jab. Every time he jabs, his hand falls down. Yeah. So... If you were K-Size coach, how would you train him to become a better fighter? Um, I'd go back to the basics. I'd stop the bouncing and the jumping around. Yeah. I'd do a, a lot less sparring, a lot more heavy bag. The trainer's a great guy that trains real fighters. But, you know, for all of us, this is, a, this is an opportunity. You know, this is prize fighting, which has always been prize fighting. It's, it's you know, it's... It, that's the reason why we're, that's the reason why they do it for the money, and that's the reason why we do it for the money. So yeah. I'm sure he's making a lot of money, and I'm sure he's doing the best he can with the fighter he's got. And it's nobody's fault that Joe Fournier started boxing at 33 years old. It's nobody's yeah. fault KSI started at whatever he is. You know, real fighters start at 12, 5, 7. Floyd Mayweather there's boxing before he can walk. Yeah. So it's, it's you can't compare someone that's father fought for the world title and is holding his hands up for him. When he's an infant to a guy that you know was playing video games and decided to do this for a little bit of press and it happened to grow into something and good for him i hope he makes a lot of money i was talking to his, one of his uh videographers today because they were filming joe as well and he said he's the nicest guy in the world and he said he pays his bills on time he pays all his people so if you're a great guy and you're polite and you're nice and you pay your bills what more does anyone need to ask for you that's all i mean that you know we're not comparing him to sugar ray Leonard. Yeah, I mean, you can't compare these guys to Sugar Ray Leonard on his deathbed. We had a guy in here yesterday, 78 years old, that fought pro, that had a faster jab than almost everybody in the gym. Wow. The, the golden, the gold, the glory days of boxing is long gone, my friend. Yeah. So, in turn, we got KSI versus Joe Fournier. Yeah. And uh, with the influencer boxing effect, um, have you noticed a um, change in your boxing gym with new fighters coming up? Uh, are there new people who are wanting to try out boxing? Yeah, I, we, yeah I have the, there's a new interest in boxing. Yeah. Um, you know, but uh, I let every I, I welcome everybody from the good, the bad, and the ugly. And usually the it the it always washes out. When you get in there, when you wind up getting in there with real guys, you want to find out the truth. You can't you can't fake it. Can't play boxing. You can play basketball. You can play football. You can play soccer. You can't play boxing. Yeah, and uh, with you not uh, with you saying you can't play boxing, KSI's coach Alexis did say in argument to beating Joe Fournier. He said that Joe Fournier isn't young anymore, and he said boxing is a young man's sport. What's your opinion on that? I agree a thousand percent. A thousand percent. If if, if... If KSI has a shot, this is a shot to beat an old, an old man. Yeah. 100%. And when looking at Joe Fournier's capabilities as a boxer, would you say he would have gone far if he started earlier? Yeah. yeah. Say that again? If Joe Fournier started earlier in his career, would you say that he, he would have become a better and maybe a superstar world boxer? If he would have started at 12, he could have been a superstar, yes. Uh, I got to let you go. I got to go back to work. You got to go? Yeah, I got to go. All right, see you, man.
sorry everyone for the sudden ending of the interview. Sadly, we couldn't interview uh, Dino for any longer. We hope you, everyone enjoys the interview and we'll see you guys at the next interview. See ya.